Everybody hears me well? Um, yeah. All right. So we have a short week, as we all know. It's a short week. Wednesday is a half a day. Thursday, there's no market. So we have Monday, Tuesday, somewhat of Wednesday and Friday. Come back. So short weeks, we know what happens in short weeks. We really don't trade too much. Um, I'll probably be putting out different kinds of lottos just for a Friday, but I think the best time to trade this week is going to actually be Friday. Um, the goal is to position ourselves in some bi weeklies to monthlies and also look at a leap. The leap that I, I'm basically focusing on is actually two of them. One is URI, United Rentals. Um, just how it reacted with anything trade war related or trade deal related, um, it was a positive. So that's a name to basically keep focus on. That's what we've been doing. Also, we are reporting the 17th. And if you look to the left of the watch list, you will see that I have the 19th of July and I have the 16th of August for calls. So the 140s for July would basically be the best bet. Why? Because they report. And I'm looking for a nice upside to over 140. Target is 154 before any major pullbacks. 146.68 is first. This is URI weekly. I love this chart. I don't fall in love with stocks, but I fall in love with charts. Okay. And this, this is basically nicely constructed. Nice asymmetrical <laughs> triangle. My favorite setup is asymmetrical triangle. Cup and handle within that as well. Whoa. How's that going? Again, this is the weekly. We are trading well inside of the double bar. Actually, we closed above the double bar. It was 242, the high, and the 12803, the low. The Looking for upside target of 146.68. But it needs to get over this while well, it can close above, which is 140.71. The high or the close here was 146.68. So we're going to do look for that. We're currently holding, if I am correct, let me sign into my account. The 140 calls for the 12th. So getting like a pre-earnings uh, run-up. That's another reason why I chose those as well. Um, the monthly is my favorite chart. It's my favorite. I'm going to show you why. This is where the excitement comes in. I look at monthlies when it comes to looking at anything that's leap, you know, or leap potential. Um, I drew a couple of things with this monthly. You can see this flag here, however you want to chart it. We have another one here. Well, However, you want to chart that as well. We got a lottery. Or so still lines up within. And to get guys. above that 146.68 or just above last month's high. I'm going to order a burlap stack. Order every but I like long term setup. Okay. In the burlap stack. Looking at, I also, oh, so I have the August 150 leaps, right? I mean, one, August 16th, 150 calls. Pretty cheap. Um, Easy 50% out of those. Um, based off the monthly ranges, that also stands out to me. I just like it. I like this a lot. Uh, it has a megaphone set up. Very, very tight range, depending on how we open. If any pullback happens to 130, let's just say we open at 130, which I doubt it. If we do gap up with futures and hold into tomorrow, we're going to get a nice move. The goal is to gap inside of either the wick or the candle, meaning opening up within the wick, which is here, last week's wick, I mean last month's candle. Would be anywhere between 
135.23, which the high actually was 135.19, and between 128.03. And he opens within there, start to build a long position. Very interesting how they closed us at the 14 SMA of the monthly, right? Just add it. Usually in, in these circumstances, when the 14 is below the 30 SMA, not above it, as you can see here where they closed it above, they closed it at the 14 as well two months ago. Um, but the 14 was above the 30 SMA. So we want that bullish cross to where the 14 is basically below trading, below the 30 SMA. Now what I usually add, and a lot of people ask me, oh, you haven't, I don't see Celts in your charts. I have my Celts in my charts. It's just the fact that too many, too many texts up makes the chart look ugly. I just use it for confirmation. 144.16 is the middle Celt on the monthly for URI. If we go to the weekly and we, we downgrade to the weekly time frame, target would be upper cal because we're already above. We have a candle combo on the weekly for URI. So looking at 146.68 as a target next two weeks. Um, and hence why we're going for the 140s. Why um, playing in the money is the safest thing to do. I tell you guys this all the time. And the best thing about playing in the money is you can add up, you can add down. And you're only losing, let's say you got in at like 230, you can double down at two dollars, not even double down, you can just add one contract here and there instead of trying to add like 50 contracts of a penny, something trading at like five cents, 20 cents. So, this is definitely on radar, long term play. VRTX, the action end of day. I got thrown off by it. I was looking at these to expi expire. And when I looked, and I woke up this morning, Saturday, I'm like, whoa, what the heck? Freaking exercised. It had a crazy spike end of day. This is the weekly. Target is 200 or upper cal. So situations like this, this is a candle combo, you can call it. And usually things like this, tend to explode, especially when it's had a resistance, 184.58. A similar setup like that would be, I just saw one. I would look at something like here on January 8th, that week, same at resistance, then popped up 11 points the next week's candle. But when it happens above the upper kelt, it's a little bit different, as you can see here. But when it's at the middle kelt, it has a continuation upside. Plus, 14 SMAs below the 30 SMA and also below the middle cal. This is actually basically nice, a nice little bullish setup. Let me actually note that too. You can just see how the prices react. 14.30 and the middle cal. All reacting accordingly. I'm looking at the 185 weeklies, any pullbacks, any open below 184.58. We have a chance to actually bounce off one more time of this middle count, which is around 180. But um, I, I doubt that they pull it that far back. But if they do that, it's actually be great for a long, for 185 two weeks out. Again, like I said, this week is going to be about basically just positioning, not looking for any home runs, looking for something to sit comfortably on for the next two and a half weeks. This is a short week. Never good to overtrade short weeks. Another one, GWW is always going to be on my radar. This has paid us very well, and then it stopped paying us, so we just stopped trading it. Maybe one more test to the lower kelp or within this channel down here to go long. Maybe this week, let's see how it, let's see how it reacts, but... Anywhere down here, I'm going to go long at least a month out for um, the July that they report this, this month coming up. What, well, July 1st is today? Well, tomorrow's July 1st. So looking for something like long-term, like 280s for when they report that I can see them beating. Still in a bull flag. Let me clean this up a bit. Oops, I don't know what I just did, but it's something. Oh, there it goes. 
Let's remove those Celts. But so far, still is in a downtrend, channel, downtrending channel. So, I mean, still has time. If it cannot, it either breaks 254.89, comes lower, or it breaks above 284.44, and it breaks out of the top of the channel of the bull flag. So I have a lot of time on this one. So I'm going to keep watching it. We're currently trading below the 14 and 30 SME on the weekly. So that's definitely a good time to, to continue to watch it because now it's got a vacuum back up before it actually comes back down. Spy. Let's look at Spy. And like the reason I'm giving you guys URI and VRTX for this week is because the more names I give you, the worse it is to focus. You guys are easily distracted with so many tickers. You know, trying to get into a move, trying to make some quick money. Those are the ones that work. This is Spy Weekly. Trading right next to all-time highs. For the, what, third time? If you have any questions, I am not answering them until after the recording's done. There's so much setups with this. I mean, what happened, what, in the week we had to vacuum down to the 30 SMA, vacuum back up to the 14 SMA, then found that as a support again. It's not the first time this actually has done it. It does it on a smaller scale. Um, cheap. I'm actually going to unnote something real quick. Whether any ticker jumps or anything for this week, regardless, it's best to play small. If you're ready, if you're in a position long over the weekend, and that's the. We'll give you guys scenarios, similar setups. We pay attention to how the SMAs react to. It's really, really important. This is just a smaller scale for SPY. This is a weekly. Here's a monthly. I love the monthly a lot. Basically, we gave, it's like nothing ever happened in May, June. Basically, we covered all of May. Now it's, it's up to July, I see where we go. Looking around 320-ish, very possible from here. If I did an extension, as you guys know how I do extensions, well, I'm gonna do an extension off of this bounce it had here. Looking at the monthly, right? Yeah, this is the monthly. To this first all-time high, well, second. All time high here before the major pullback. Now, after I do that on a bigger scale, then I shorten it and I go to the weekly so it looks more cleaner. And I do a basically retracement inside of an extension here.
So the important level here is 293.54 on the weekly. It only closed above 293.54 two times on the weekly. Last week and in January, February, March, in April. This is the daily chart. You can just see with the fibs that I drawn, it looks more crispier the more I go into details. The more I narrow the charts down. Bounced off of the 14 SMA here. Possibly one more pull back to the 14 SMA to retest it. And then move back over 294.80. Any close above 294.80, we're definitely seeing 298.86 in about seven days from that, or a week, basically. We haven't really been trading SPY, but we actually been using SPY for direction for certain um, tickers that we've been playing. Some tickers are funny. Some don't even follow SPY at times. Some of them do. GWW was following SPY like crazy. But then if you look at Friday with how SPY moved up to 293, GWW actually just stood there. There's a lot of, a lot of tickets you got to pay attention to um, when trading. Because some of them like to follow the market, some of them don't. Unusual volume. I don't watch option activity. Everybody knows that. Um, my scan is based off of 14 and 30 SMA. That's that's all I can share because that's basically all it is. That's my criteria. It's nothing, no rocket science behind it. This is spy. What ES opens up around I think six o'clock. Other names that I've been watching too. I mean, everything that's here on my watch list. Regeneron is definitely always going to be on my watch list. The action on that one's been very suspect. They're very constructive. This is a four hour for Regeneron. So basically, we generally have been trading below the 14 SMA since what is this? It's April, March. So since March, has been trading under the 14 SMA. So we're waiting for a vacuum to happen to the 14 SMA, which is 332.92 when it actually comes down. But if they hold it below the lower double bar, which is 325.72, that's what's gonna. That's what's gonna bring the fourteen SMA down to here, and that's what I like about when you're drawing fibs. They actually do line up with your SMAs. It just takes time for them to actually line up with it. So this is a weekly. I'll give you a daily chart. See, it took. January, February, March, April. Well, 30 SMA has been the most resistance. So, yeah, we're staying with March. Even on the daily in March, the 14, 30 SMA has been severe resistance. Now we've basically been channeling in between 295.17 and 325.72. 14 and 30 SMA are crossing nicely. Trying to see what exactly they're trying to do here. The setup is really, really good. I like it a lot. I gotta check out when they report. But definitely, it's a good long at 325.72, which is the first double bar, unless they, they go for the second rejection. 
I like this one a lot. But it also can be a bear flag too. Otherwise you gotta watch this one very, very closely and play, play very smart with this one. Sometimes it moves all over the place. Some people can call this a bear flag. It depends what you see, what your visual is like. And I've been working on this like Christian, uh, channel. It has co Christians that literally mark up with each other. Um, I just, I use the channel to help me know if I should go long or go short. Price is trading above the blue dotted. Same thing like with fibs and extent, fibs, fib extensions and retracements. I do the same thing with a double bar. If price is trading above the double bar, I'm going long if it holds. I'm going short if it breaks below. So in, in the worst case scenario, for example, Look at Regeneron here. This was a breach to go short. Somewhat is the bottom here. Needs to get above here. And then we'll see somewhat 356.27 before we come back and we test down here. Not saying it's gonna, it's gonna work out this way, but I'll take a screenshot just to have this saved out. And mapped out for you guys, but um, it would have to go crazy parabolic to get to extend even that high. But I'm seeing it's gonna be a nice, nice little bounce here and there. It's gonna be a nice play long term. I like it. But again, bios are very risky to play. They're very tricky, not risky. Well, risky too, but they're tricky as well. Some data is supposed to be coming out this week for VRTX. Um, I think that's why the spike, I'm into close. Somebody already knows something. Hoping that's the, that's the, the case. See, so I already have my extension drawn here, right? So to simplify that, I will just do a channel. This is basically how the channel is working. I don't know if it's even enough. But if they did it that way, then if I did it somewhat like this, it would just line up much better. Eh, nah. Keep it simple. This is what we got. It's, cr it's just crazy. When you look at charts, like without even adding any resistance supports, trend lines, anything like that, just have like you look at your 14 and 30 SMA or your 50, your 200, whatever you use. Um, you, you can just look at things and you can see the setup, the pattern developing. I like, I like, um, Re Regeneron as well. There's a couple of names on my list. Um, we have uh, Zoom. Zoom is another one. I mean, we're using Zoom exactly as we speak. I like it. Um, possibly still more downside. But it's holding that 30 SMA very, very strong. This is a daily chart at that. Very interesting chart though. I tell you, I use a big, I use a bigger time frame, draw my extensions.
Then I go into the smaller time frame, which would be daily. There's also, there's nothing wrong to make your, make your levels line up. Some of them don't have to be accurate. So it's, don't try to make your levels that accurate because that's not how it works. They'll print at prices that are not even as accurate as the fib level itself. It'll be off like eight, eight, seven, nine, two, five. Just because it can't break like 89 or something like that. So got a little gap here to fill. We'll look for that target for 881. 8081, double bar. See if they bring it down here. Then we get long around here. Don't know what pattern, I don't know what setup, what is being developed here yet, but if I had to take a guess, this would be it. Put it on a four hour for you guys, so it looks more better. Where's the IPO stocks? They look a little bit weird because they don't have that much trading candles. Give you the bigger picture. This is a four hour possible breakdown or it can move back up, but it has to get over 92.79 or breach 85.39. So you got 92.79, which is upper fib combo. Mid fib combo is 90.94. Lower fib is 89.09, trading below that currently. So you can say it's a rising wedge or a bear flag forming on a four hour. Possibly one more test of the 14 SMA, then reject. If this touches the 14 SMA one more time and it has some volume behind it, then we go long. But if it doesn't have volume behind it, then we short it. But like I tell you guys, when price is trading below 14 30, and 30 SMA, when the 14 is below the 30 SMA, it's somewhat of a bullish sign, not 100% until your levels have been reclaimed, which is your resistance levels. For example, like I said, 90, 92.79, which is the upper fib combo, that level needs to be reclaimed. But we definitely see some more downside here. Nice, probably a 10 point move or a seven point move before it advances back up. This is Zoom again. Another one that always pops up on my radar, I mean, we traded this before is Tro. It's a sneaky one. You can be on the right, you, you can be on the right side once it starts moving, and then it can go against you very, very fast. And what I mean by that is, okay, so it took off Friday. It's actually been in a crazy candle combo breakout, two candle combos, one, two, let me clean this up. Hold on. Perfect. So that was, for those that don't know what a candle combo is, usually happens basically at the middle Keltner channel or the average Keltner channel. Um, it, the setup is basically, I'm going to show you right now. I'm actually going to highlight it. These are candle combos. This is a small one. This is a bigger one. Sometimes we just into a gap up. Here's another one right here. Another one here. Tro, I've been always looking for it. The target is 113 on this stock. Um, longer term target is about 125. Very, this stock is... Like, nobody really trades this but us, from what I know. And every time I take my eyes off of it, it gets away from me. We got caught, what, Monday when it was on a downtrend. Didn't see it bounce off the 30 SMA. Held the 30 SMA, then went right back up from 106 to basically 110. Four-point move. Gotta love those, but always keep your eyes on these. I got to make a watch that's called not watching, but watching. 
so that I, I make sure I check it every chance I get. CTSH, that's another name I like. There goes Futures. Look at that gap up. Holy moly donut shop. That's a big gap up. Plus 29. Jesus Christ. 30 points. We're all watching this live right now. Pop that bad boy on. Woo! They're going to fade that. They're going to fade that. Look where it gapped up to at our channel. Nice. And as I stated, if it holds that channel, that level, you see some good continuation before it actually pulls back. This little gap here is going to see some volatility. That It's going to be a nice quick pullback before it actually advances higher. See that 1430 SMA cross on the four hour? This is our channel here. I keep it simple, no extensions here. I can draw them, but I like it how it is right now. It's gonna be very interesting. This should be good for your for your eye Monday too. We should get at least one thirty five to one thirty eight. Remember if this gap holds. like it a lot. And then look, I can even draw an extension for you guys. Check this out. So you guys can see my levels. So you see this, this demand, this blue line is a demand area. Big demand area. And then it just takes off. So what we're gonna use is that demand area. I'm actually gonna actually draw my fit from here. I'm gonna bring it up to here. I'm gonna drop it right down to here. Notice anything? Let me actually move it over so you can see a little bit more cleaner across the board. That 29.79. Overhead, so it will be 29.79 will be the overhead target. I can actually leave this up like this. For anybody that's long over the weekend, congrats. Again, if this holds, it's gonna be epic. And I already, and the funny part is, remember when I told you guys to buy 292.50 calls for Monday? Did anybody buy those? Then I said buy 293 calls for Wednesday. Don't forget that. Yep, they're right here. They've been in our watch this since around two dollars. Yes, yes. Cause something was telling me nobody pays attention, but last year we gapped up. The week of we had a big gap up the week of um, Independence Day. So I was seeing us gapping up Monday. Don't know why. I just had that feeling in my gut. But as you guys can see these levels here, I'm gonna actually stop the recording so I can take questions. Let me stop the recording.